Okay, guys. You gotta help me vote. Put them down. Which book should I read next? Come on, Chicky. Help me out here. Really? Which book should I read, guys? They were traumatized. Go pick out a book. Chicky, what about you? Oh my gosh. Okay. Oh yeah. It looks like Once Upon a River by Diane Setterfield. Is that gonna be a good book, Chicky? Okay, so these were the three books that got the most votes among the fiction uh, on my boobash possibility pile. Drive your plow over the bones of the dead, the corset, and Once Upon a River. And Chicky has selected Once Upon a River for me. I enjoyed The 13th Tale. I don't read a lot of mysteries, but I read that one and I enjoyed it. Uh, so hopefully I will enjoy this one as well. I know there's a little girl that sort of drowns and comes back to life, maybe. That's all I recall. Uh, it's a period piece, so. I'll have more to say after I've read a bit. So let's get to it. <laughs> Found a themed bookmark. Ooh, I should color it. That would be fun. Along the borders of this world lie others. There are places you can cross. This is one such place. Ooh. You know, I haven't done much of anything today, and I was going to continue in that vein, but in the end, discipline is stronger than motivation, and... I'm not mad about this view. With a good song on the earbuds? Nope. Not mad at all. Oh my goodness. The sky is on fire. Well, I better get busy on this. Long after the intruder had disappeared from sight, the cat followed him by ear. The drag of twigs across the woolen grain of a coat, the contact of heels on stone cold earth, the stir of woodland creatures disturbed, until eventually nothing. The cat dropped to the floorboards and returned to the hearth, where it pressed itself against the warm stone again and went back to sleep. So it was that after the impossible event and the hour of the first puzzling and wondering, came the various departures from the swan and the first of the tellings. But finally, while the night was still dark, everybody at last was in bed, and the story settled like sediment in the minds of them all, witnesses, tellers, listeners. The only sleepless one was the child herself, who, at the heart of the tale, breathed the seconds lightly in and lightly out, while she gazed at nothing and listened to the sound of the river rushing by. What are you up to, guy? <laughs> kitty times kitty times good morning so i am on page 57 of once upon a river by diane setterfield and i wanted to give you my initial impressions before i get too deeply into it like i'd really like to finish today and it's 450 some odd pages but there's a lot of dialogue which goes quickly so maybe uh, anyway, this actually isn't the one that I wanted to read. I really kind of had my heart set on the corset or drive your plow over the bones just because um, I enjoyed Silent Companion so, so much. And I've just heard so many great things about drive your plow over the bones of the dead. And this one, while I did enjoy the 13th tale, I think... I've heard maybe mixed things about this one. I'm not sure, but anyway, 
I'm kind of glad that Moo Moo picked it for me because I'm really enjoying it thus far. I really like the style of their writing. It's very evocative of a sense of place and it's very intriguing. So opening up the story, you're at a tavern in during the Victorian era. So it's Victorian, yay. Um, I think 1880s, seven or something like that. Uh, but the tavern is known for storytelling and just in the middle of a story, this large man, wounded man, walks in with um, a child in his arms or a, a childlike puppet or, you know. <laughs> but yes, mystery ensues. You have the town um, healer. She's I guess a nurse that was raised in a convent um, and she's just through circumstances studied a lot in the medical field. I really like her a lot. I like her person personality and we get to know the innkeepers and their youngest son, Jonathan. Um, and then the, the townsfolk are kind of another character, as is the river. So, and you see like at the end there, the way the story travels out into the village and into the world. And yeah, so this idea of story is going to be a really strong theme throughout this. But yeah, I'm intrigued. I'm really, really captivated by this idea and the way she's telling it so far. So, yeah. And now, um, I'm starving. So, <laughs> breakfast time, I think the last of the pupusas are mine. Oh yeah. <laughs> Looks like fall. Yes, it's after one o'clock and I'm still in my pajamas, but this book is really enjoyable. So three things that I'm loving about it thus far. One is the writing style. It's just very beautiful. It meanders like a river and each word is just, it's just nice. It's just nice. The setting is also like really good sense of place all the time with this inn and the different places these people live and the river itself is a character really nice setting and then the characters themselves I am just I'm attached to them I'm attached to Rita the nurse and Henry this photographer guy and the Vons, the young couple, and Mr. Armstrong, and even the little boy that he met and, you know, gave a marble to. Um, Lily White, like, I'm very, I'm very caught up in their stories, and I care so much about them, and I want all of their stories to have happy endings, and I don't know how Diane Setterfield is going to do that, but I really need her to, so... I don't know about the plot or if that even really matters to me because it's the people, it's the people that I care about. And you know, it's written in such a way that I don't mind reading any of it. I just love the beauty of the words. So yeah, I think fingers crossed, but I'm hoping that I think this is gonna be successful as long as you know, my, my people are taken care of. So stay tuned. You having little naps, Moo Moo? Cozy. More naps. <laughs> oh, such cute babies.
Aldi and California raspberry are way tempting, but I'm here for groceries. Yep. This is the life. <laughs> Ooh. Guys playing with Moo Moo. Just gotta bop him in the head like Chicky does. Making that baby nervous, guy. <laughs> Y'all having a party? Okay, I couldn't quite finish last night. I've got like 80 pages left and it's so good. Hello, I finished Once Upon a River by Diane Satterfield at about 10 o'clock this morning and I loved it so much. I'm gonna give it to my sister. I think she'll like it as well. Yeah, I just, I loved the characters. I loved the people in this. I just really did. And the way she took care of them just made my heart happy. I needed this book. It just it made me happy. And the writing was beautiful as well. So yay, very successful mid-month book bash. So I did have to finish my second book. Um, the day after which you know is normal for me you guys know I cheated this game but that's okay so you know Saturday was unexpected I ended up I don't know if I told you I ended up my neighbor next door he called me Saturday morning and was like can I drive my motorcycle across your yard and I'm like sure um, he was getting his driveway resealed and so I said how much is he charging because <laughs> I knew my neighbor had researched it and it was a good deal and a good guy so I ended up getting my driveway repaved um, Saturday and so I had to do a lot of you saw <laughs> you saw I had to do a lot of maniacal labor in the yard to prepare for that and then ended up going to dinner um, I did shower before dinner so <laughs> it was presentable anyway anyway um, if you don't know what I'm talking about watch the vlog before this one. So I ended up finishing the two books for Boo Bash, one nonfiction and one fiction, which was fun. I totally enjoyed both of them. And I completed 767 pages. So I'm pretty pleased with that. Lunch time now and on to the next read. Thank you so much for watching and I'll be back soon. Bye. Oh my goodness, Momo, did you get a live one?